what's the answer to that question? Well, it's all about incentives and and that's true. You know, it's probably a blanket answer for anybody, any time about any topic, but it is all about incentives and the incentives just really aren't in place today. And what I mean by that is there, there's really kind of three main pillars uh, to those incentives that are telling the energy companies to basically slow down their drilling activity or grow at a much more measured pace. And instead, all the money that they're making, divert it to returning that that capital to shareholders. And, and the three incentives that we identified, and, and there's probably some more, but these are the main ones, I think. The first uh, is political. And you know, you're know you still seeing a huge amount of um, rhetoric coming from the administration, both here and, and throughout Europe, uh, to move away from fossil fuels and hydrocarbons. And so we get asked the question all the time, well, now that there's an energy crisis and now that the government is you know, aware of this, certainly these things are changing. I said, well, certainly not. You know, There's really no indication that there's been any change in rhetoric or any change in sentiment coming from the administrations at all. And if you look at you know all of the responses to the energy uh, crisis, they've all been fairly uh, antagonistic towards the energy companies themselves. And so what I mean by that is, you know, they talked about uh, releasing oil from the SPR to bring prices down. They talked about potentially having an export ban, removing, you know, neither of those would obviously have any, do any benefit to an energy producing company. Um, talked about removing taxes, uh, gasoline taxes and diesel taxes. Again, you know, the energy company producing the oil and gas doesn't see any advantage to that. Um, and, and, you know, the um, Inflation Reduction Act has huge subsidies for wind, solar, electric vehicles. So nothing there in favor of the oil. So really, all the signals that are coming from the administration is still, you know, we don't want fossil fuels, and we're going to make life difficult as best we can for the fossil fuel industry. There's been no change there whatsoever. So that's number one. Um, number two, and this one I think is quite interesting, is um, investors. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, you know, in the oil and gas industry uh, has been the best performing sector of the S&P since March of 2020. So you're coming up on three years. Um, and yet the multiples of these stocks, the investors' interest in these stocks and the capital coming into this sector has been, not, has been nil. And I've never really seen anything like that. I've never seen a sector that's had leadership for three full years and everyone's just ignored it entirely. When I look at money flowing into the different energy ETFs, they've all seen money flow out over the last two to three years. I mean, it's, it's really incredible when you think D about despite, it. Have that, despite this bull market. In despite the huge performance, it has not been, normally you get prices that go up because you have lots of capital rushing in. That hasn't been the case this time. It's been on effectively on, on liquidation and the price has still gone up and up and up. It's either been because of short covering or it has been um, just on, you know, the fact that the marginal price has been set higher and higher. Uh, but what it is left with is it's left you with these companies that are trading at fractions of what their inherent intrinsic worth is. So if you're the CEO of an energy company and your company is trading at five times earnings and maybe half of its intrinsic value is measured from the cash flows that it'll produce given the oil price, um, and you have $100 million lying around, and you say, what am I going to spend this on? Your stock price will do better almost nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, if you take that money and you buy back your stock versus put it in the ground because your stock's cheap. And if you put it in the ground, the market's not going to reward you for it anyway because they don't really care about production, earnings, or net asset value. So the incentive, even though if you were just had your Harvard Business School cap on, and you looked at a single well and you said, should I drill that well? You could generate huge rates of return on a single well, even at today's oil prices. But nine times out of 10, you're going to be better off buying back your stock. And so that's what we're seeing these companies do. Instead of putting that money in the ground, they continue to buy it back. I've never seen an energy bull market like we have right now that hasn't attracted investor capital. I've never seen a bull market where the industry is not responding. You know, you're still a good 40% below where you were pre-COVID in terms of capital spending in this space and like 60% below where you were uh, back in 2013, 14, and 15.